Welcome back to Branchy Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. On Friday, the Biden administration announced the delay of a proposed rule banning menthol cigarettes. While many leading health organizations supported the proposed ban, it has faced public backlash and criticism from several organizations. Health and Human Services Secretary Xavier Becerra said in a statement, quote, This rule has granted has garnered historic attention, and the public comment period has yielded an, an immense amount of feedback, including from various elements of the civil rights and criminal justice movement. It's clear that there are still more conversations to have, and that will take significantly more time." End quote. The proposed ban has been in the works for several years, but was delayed in December of 2023. A government official said there is no timetable for when the rule will be finalized. The Internal Revenue Service says their new free tax filing service was, a successful, was successful this year. Direct file is like Intuit TurboTax, but operated by the government allowing for the taxpayer to file their taxes themselves for free. Direct file surpassed its goal of 100,000 taxes filed by 40,000 people. Democrats want to expand direct files reach next year since it was only available in 12 states for simple tax returns. Massachusetts Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren thinks this is a good step forward and a modernization of the tax preparation process. But some Republicans disagree and think this program is a redundant system that can be done by private tax companies. The Department of Transportation has unveiled new plans that provide more transparency regarding airline ticket prices and refunds for canceled or altered flights. Under the new regulations, airlines will be required to refund passengers in cash for canceled or significantly changed flights. A flight is considered significantly changed if the departure time is changed by three to six hours depending on domestic or international flights, if the departing or arriving airport is changed, if the number of connections has increased, if a passenger is downgraded to a lower class of service, or if the changes are less accessible to those with disabilities. The new rule gives airlines 20 days to automatically issue the refunds in cash or the same form of payment used to purchase the tickets. The agency also announced a new requirement that airlines and ticket agents must dis disclose upfront any fees they charge for checked bags, carry-on bags, and canceled or changing a reservation. The Transportation Department expects the rule to save consumers $500 million annually. Last Friday, U.S. agriculture officials issued a rule that poultry producers will be required to bring salmonella bacteria to very low levels in certain chicken products to help prevent food poisoning. When the regulation takes effect in 2025, salmonella will be considered an adulterant, which is a contaminant that can cause foodborne illness when it is detected above certain levels in frozen, breaded, and stuffed raw chicken products. Sandra Eskin, the USDA's Undersecretary for Food Safety, said, quote, It's the first time the U.S. Department of Agriculture has declared salmonella as an adulterant in raw poultry in the same way that certain E. coli bacteria are regarded as contaminants that must be kept out of raw ground beef sold in grocery stores. The new rule also means that if a product exceeds the allowed level of salmonella, it can't be sold and is subject to recall." End quote. In a follow-up to a story we brought to you about forever chemicals in our drinking water, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has designated two widely used forever chemicals as hazardous substances under the United States Superfund law. The two designated chemicals under the PFAS family, known as PFOAs and PFOSs, are considered forever chemicals because they take a long time to break down in the environment and in the human body. 
This ruling will now allow the EPA to investigate and clean up leaks and spills of these harmful chemicals. It will also ensure that polluters are charged for the cleanup of contamination involving these chemicals. This class of chemicals helps repel water and oil and was used in products like Teflon and firefighting foam for decades. While manufacturing was largely phased out due to health concerns, the chemicals can still be found in hundreds of household items and in drinking water systems. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more after the break. James. He was surprised to find out that he has elevated blood pressure, which could turn into high blood pressure. So he talked with his doctor about a healthy path to get his numbers down. He quit smoking, which makes a big difference for his overall heart health. He also cut down on salt by watching out for high sodium on food labels and added a 30 minute walk five days a week to his routine. These healthy steps weren't easy, but lowering his blood pressure was worth it. Learn more about his healthy path. Welcome back. Last Wednesday, a road rage incident led to a car being struck by a bullet on the southern artery of Interstate 93 in Braintree. According to state police who responded to the scene, the man who was driving his work pickup truck received an extremely minor injury. In a statement posted on social media, officials said, quote, preliminary investigation suggests that a potential road rage incident involving two vehicles, separate and unrelated to the victim's vehicle, took place on the northbound side. An occupant of one of those other vehicles fired around, which struck the vehicle on the southbound side. End quote. The investigation, including processing of the vehicle and interviews of witnesses, is being conducted by state police patrols, detectives, crime scene technicians, and ballistics ex experts. A Braintree student with autism who was directed by a judge to attend regular middle school has now changed her ruling after the student was taken to the hospital. Norfolk County Superior Court Judge Katherine Hamm released a modified order on Thursday that no longer requires 14-year-old Samantha Fretchen to attend East Middle School. The order was changed after Fretchen suffered a panic attack on Tuesday, which led to her being transported from the school to a hospital. Although the judge did not honor the request of the student and her mother to return to her previous private school at the expense of the Braintree school systems, the judge did rule the district to send the student to a less expensive private school that specializes in working with students with disabilities. The Braintree Community Partnership on Substance Use is partnering up with Nurtured Roots LLC to put on the event Mindful Families at the Town Hall. The event is aimed to help Braintree residents learn how to reduce stress, improve focus, manage emotions, and experience relaxation of mind and body with your family. The program is free and includes take-home materials and drawings for a variety of books and mindfulness tools. Join the fun on Sunday, May 5th from 1 to 3 p.m. For questions, please contact Contact Jennifer Lynn at nurturedrootsma at gmail.com or, or you can give them a call at 603-591-7484. Braintree's annual rabies clinic, sponsored by the Town of Braintree, Braintree JCs, and Dr. Joseph Cosman, DMV of the VCA, will be held on Saturday, May 4th from 10 a.m. to noon outside of Braintree Town Hall. The vaccination fee per animal is $15, and residents are asked to bring their animal's current rabies certificate. The American Red Cross is visiting Braintree for their initiative, Sound the Alarm, Save a Life. The initiative aims to install more working smoke alarms in local homes. According to the Red Cross, working smoke detectors can cut the risk of death from home fires in half. So, on May 18th, volunteers from the Red Cross and Braintree Fire Department are partnering up to install new smoke detectors in Braintree homes between 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Appointments are still available and you can head to soundthealarm.org slash ma to book it now. Although Braintree Beautification Day is over, there are still ways for residents to help beautify the town. The mayor's office announced an initiative called Blue Bag Campaign, where residents can pick up a blue bag and collect trash anywhere in town. Residents can now help beautify the town while working with friends, while you're on a walk, or just at a neighborhood park. When the bag is full, just leave it securely tied near the curb and alert the mayor's office where you left it. Once you call, the DPW will swing by and pick it up. For more information, head to braintreema.gov. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area.
Hi, I'm Tom Lyons, a retired captain from the Quincy Fire Department and the author of the book, Fighting Fire, A Proactive Approach. Do you know that electrical failures are the third leading cause of home fires? Cords and plugs led in this category, while extension cords dominated this category. To avoid these fires, plug heat-generated appliances directly into an outlet. Do not use power strips or extension cords on these appliances. Power strips are designed for use with electronics only. Do not put electrical cords underneath rugs or pinch behind furniture. Do not overload outlets. Charge laptops and phones on hard surfaces only. Finally, if an electrical device is not working as designed, it is time to repair it or replace it. Be conscious of your home environment and be safe. And thank you for doing so. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories. In some welcoming news for local businesses around the state, two popular COVID-19 era dining options are now being made permanent in Massachusetts. The cocktails to go and outdoor dining policies are included as part of the supplemental budget that was passed last Thursday by the Massachusetts legislator. Under the now permanent COVID-19 era laws, mixed drinks can be sold with takeout or delivery food orders in sealed containers. If they are being transported by car, the drinks must be placed in the trunk or non-passenger compartments of the vehicle. Expect to show some ID for pickup or to receive your delivery. The supplemental budget also made pandemic era outdoor dining policies permanent. For the first time, a confirmed case of the Powassan virus, a tick-borne disease, has been reported in Sharon, Massachusetts. According to the Sharon Health Department, the Powassan virus, much like Lyme disease, is transmitted through infected ticks. Although still rare, the number of reported cases of people sick from Powassan virus has increased in recent years. Symptoms of disease usually begin between one week to one month after the bite of an infected tick. Signs and symptoms include fever, headache, vomiting, weakness, confusion, loss of coordination, speech difficulties, and seizures. Doctors are urging Massachusetts, Massachusetts residents to be careful when outdoors and to keep checking for ticks on your body, on your kids, and on your pets. There are some new rules in effect after recent brawls at a local carnival. Following fights that led to one arrest, Fiesta Shows has issued a policy for minors that addresses some of the issues that led to its carnival in Weymouth being closed for the last two days of its run. The company also operates the Kingston Carnival, which started last Friday and was scheduled to run through the weekend. The details section for the Kingston Carnival on Fiesta's website laid out the new rules under the policy which requires all children between 13 and 17 years old to be accompanied by a parent or chaperone over 21 years old. Each adult, who the policy states must remain with the minors, can only chaperone a maximum of four children at a time. Fiesta said valid proof of age may be required, with the company saying the requirement will, quote, be enforced in order to both obtain entry and also remain at the event. Failure to comply with re will result in being denied initial admission or ejection from the event. There are no exceptions. No refunds will be given if you are ejected from the event, end quote. For more information, visit FiestaShows.com. A Quincy police detective who was placed on leave last July amidst investigation into possible sexual misconduct has resigned from the department according to Police Chief Mark Kennedy. The officer, Detective Andrew Keenan, was accused of sexting a mentally disabled woman living at the Cardinal Cushing School in Hanover in 2017. Keenan, who joined the department in 2014, is the son of former Quincy Police Chief Paul Keenan. Keenan is also the nephew of Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch and State Senator John Keenan. Last September, the Quincy Mayor hired a Waltham employment law firm to conduct an external investigation into the alleged 2017 incident. Chief Kennedy said that the law firm delivered the completed report on Wednesday, April 24th, at which point he scheduled a hearing to determine whether Keenan should be terminated. Before the hearing could take place, Kennedy received a resignation letter on Thursday from Keenan's lawyer. According to the Quincy Mayor's Chief of Staff, Keenan will still receive his pension. The third annual Quincy Multicultural Festival is scheduled for Saturday, May 11th. 
Cultural displays will fill pageant fields for the festival that aims to highlight Quincy's diversity. The event will include performances, food from around the world, and displays put together by Quincy families to showcase their heritage. The festival is registered as a nonprofit organization, and the event will raise money to support families interested in participating. The Quincy Multicultural Festival is scheduled for noon to 4 p.m. on Saturday, May 11th. For more information, visit quincymulticulturalfestival.org. Thanks for watching Brainty today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. That time of the year again, flu season. Getting vaccinated against the flu and COVID-19 can help keep you, your family, and your community healthy. You can even get both vaccines at the same time. Visit mass.gov slash flu shot to learn. Welcome back to Brainty today. Today in entertainment, we have three movie recommendations for you to watch. First, the beautiful game follows Mal, the manager of England's homeless football team who takes his players to Rome with the hope of being crowned champions of the Homeless World Cup. He brings with them a talented striker, Vinny, who could give them a real chance at winning. The film stars Bill Nye and Michael Ward. You can watch The Beautiful Game now on Netflix. Next. Miller's Girl follows a talented young writer who embarks on a creative odyssey when her teacher assigns a project that entangles them both in an increasingly complex web. The film stars Jenna Ortega and Martin Freeman. You can watch Miller's Girl now on Netflix. Finally, Boy Kills World follows Boy, a mayhem machine who's been training to assassinate the bloodthirsty Hilda Vanderkoy and avenge his family's murder. Guided by his sister's mischievous spirit, Boy uncovers one stunning revelation after another as he barrels towards Hilda. The film stars Bill Skarsgård and Jessica Roth. You can watch Boy Kills World now in theaters. That'll do it for news today. Remember, if you're a customer of Verizon, you can watch Bcam TV in high definition on channel 2128. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on Bcam TV. We'll see you next time.